What's up guys, welcome back to my tech corner. In this video, I'll be showing you how to build a gaming PC with an AM4 CPU in 2023. So let's get straight into it. Before we start this video, literally 0.7% of you guys are subscribed. I try really hard to create pretty good quality videos, even though I don't have too good of equipment. I do try really hard in editing and video making. So if you guys could just go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, it will help support out this channel a lot. And if you guys don't want to be subscribed anymore, you could just simply unsubscribe. Um, I really appreciate the support. Alrighty, so the things you'll need for this build are as follows. A Phillips head screwdriver, cable ties, thermal paste, an anti-static bracelet, and a small pair of scissors. Now, I recommend having a screwdriver that has interchangeable bits. It'll just make life a lot easier. So go ahead and take out all the components out of the box, and let's get to building. Now, your first step is to clear off the area you're choosing to build on. An example, I'm using my desk, so I'm going to go ahead and make some space here. The next step is preparing your tower case. I'll be using the Corsair Crystal Series 680X as an example. Go ahead and place your case in your work area, then remove any panels and accessory boxes it may have come with. So here, I'm removing the side tempered glass panel, the top fan tray, and the bottom airflow filter. Next step is installing your case fans. If your case comes with pre-installed fans, an example, this 680X comes with three pre-installed LL120s, you can leave them there. If your case comes with removable fan trays, go ahead and remove the fan tray. Now, in your pack of fans, you should have gotten these. These are fan screws. They all look a little different, but they all do the same thing. Don't worry. Grab your fan and align it with the correct mounting holes for your size fan. Also, make sure your fan is facing the right way. On the casing of the fans, well, most casings of fans, you'll see a few arrows telling you where the airflow will be heading. You're going to want to place your fans in the best airflow path possible. An example, in this build I'm making, I'll be having 5 intake fans and 3 exhaust. This is the perfect airflow path for my setup, so don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. Now, if your case came with any pre-installed fan controllers, you might want to connect your fans into those as you're building. An example, my case came with a pre-installed Commander Pro and RGB hub. I went ahead and connected the PWM connector of the fans I just installed into the PWM ports of the Commander Pro. Then I went ahead and installed the RGB connector into the RGB port of the RGB hub. Now the connectors you have may be different for you. Your fans may have 3 pin DC rather than 4 pin PWM. Your fans may have 4 pin RGB rather than 3 pin ARGB or no lighting at all. The fan controller your case came with should have the necessary connections for your fans. Also, your fans may have come with a fan controller too. If that's the case, it will definitely have the required connections to control your fans. Here's an example of a fan controller your case or your case fans may have come with. As you can see, I'm connecting the PWM connector of the fan into the PWM port, and I'm connecting the ARGB connector of the fan into the ARGB port. A tip here as well would be to wire manage along the way as I'm doing here. It will save you a lot of time along the way and when you're finished with your build. Alright, so go ahead and move your case off your work area or just put it to the side and grab your anti-static bracelet and put it on. It's time to prepare your motherboard. It's best to have your bracelet on now because of the motherboard and the components you'll be installing on the motherboard are very sensitive to static electricity and you do not want to damage it. Something that I like doing whenever I build computers is grabbing the power supply for my build and plugging it into the wall then connecting the anti-static bracelet to the power supply as it's grounded. Don't worry, it's safe. Our goal here is to install everything possible onto the motherboard. So let's start with your CPU and CPU cooler. Grab your AM4 CPU. It should have came with a stock cooler as well. Then look at the socket that the motherboard has. It should look like this. Then go ahead and grab and lift up the bar here, like so. Then your socket should move just a little bit. Now very carefully install your CPU. On one of the corners of the CPU, you should see a small golden arrow. Align it with the small arrow on the socket. It will look like this. After installing your CPU, go ahead and lift the bar back down. And congratulations, you just installed your CPU. Now, let's go ahead and install your stock cooler. I'll be showing you how to install the Type 1, 2, and 3 AM4 stock coolers. To install the Type 1 and Type 2 stock AM4 coolers, go ahead and grab your screwdriver. Now, remove the four screws on the AM4 plastic mounting clips. They'll be sitting at the top and bottom of your AM4 socket. Now, your cooler should have came with pre-installed thermal paste. If not, go ahead and place a pea-sized drop of thermal paste in the middle of your CPU's IHS, like so. 
Then go ahead and align your Type 1 and Type 2 stock AM4 coolers. Then in a storm formation, screw it down evenly. You might have to put a little bit of pressure. Make sure not to over tighten too. Then go ahead and plug the PWM port of your cooler into the PWM CPU port on your motherboard like so. After installing your cooler, it should look like this. Now it's time to install your Type 3 stock AM4 cooler. For this step, leave the AM4 mounting clips alone. Go ahead and grab your Type 3 AM4 stock cooler and align the metal clips onto the AM4 mounting clips at the top and bottom of your socket. They should be secured onto the clips like so. Then at the top of the cooler, there should be a black lever that looks like this. Go ahead and move it all the way to the left. You'll have to put a lot of pressure to do so. Then after that, go ahead and plug in the PWM connector into your motherboard's PWM CPU port. Next, we're going to be installing your RAM. Now before you install your RAM, make sure you check your motherboard's manual for your RAM setup. An example, I have two full sticks of RAM and two accessory sticks of RAM. I want to run dual channels, so I'll be installing my two full sticks of RAM in slots A2 and B2. Go ahead and open up the top clips of your RAM slots that you're installing your RAM into. Then align the notch of your RAM with the notch of the slot. Then install your RAM at an angle like so. It will make it a lot easier to install. Then go ahead and press down until you hear a click. Now, if you're pressing down and your RAM isn't going in, then that means that you're installing it wrong and you might want to stop because you might damage it. So go ahead and flip it around and it should go in well. The next step is installing your M.2 SSD. For this step, you'll need these. These are M.2 standoffs, they come with small screws, and they should have came with your motherboard. They basically keep the SSD flush with the slot. Go ahead and remove your motherboard's M.2 heatsink if it has one, and then screw in your M.2 standoff according to the length of your SSD. Next, go ahead and carefully insert your M.2 into the slot, and then screw it down with the provided M.2 screw. If your M.2 drive is PCIe 4.0 enabled, refer to your motherboard's manual to see which slot is PCIe 4.0 capable and to see which SATA slots will be disabled. Then, if your motherboard has an M.2 heatsink, go ahead and remove the plastic film covering the thermal pad and place it back onto the motherboard. Alrighty, so now since your motherboard is repaired, we can go ahead and place it into your case. But before we do that, we need to install your power supply. Now, if you have a modular or semi-modular power supply, I recommend plugging in the cables you're going to need before installing it into the case. It'll make life a lot easier. For this next step, you'll need these. Their power supply screws, and they should have came with your power supply or case. So go ahead and place your power supply onto the anti-vibration pads your case should have. If it doesn't have any, then just go ahead and align it with the four power supply mounting holes on the rear of your case. Then screw it down in a star formation. Make sure not to over tighten, and also make sure your power supply faces the airflow vent your case should have for the power supply. Alright, so now we can install your- wait. Hold on a second, your case needs standoffs for your motherboard. If your case comes with pre-installed standoffs, then you can go ahead and skip this step. Now, your standoffs will definitely look different, but here's mine for example. What you're going to want to do is to place as many standoffs according to your motherboard. An example, I have an ATX motherboard, so I'm going to need 9 standoffs. Go ahead and grab your standoffs and screw it down like so. Now, if your motherboard has an input-output shield, then go ahead and install it now. It will go here. I don't have one to show you, but you'll need to apply a little bit of pressure to get it in there. Finally, we can install your motherboard. Go ahead and place it into your case and align it with the standoffs you just screwed down. Then, in a star formation, screw down your motherboard. Now, your case should have came with the correct size screws for your motherboard. Mine look like this, and I added washers so I don't scratch the motherboard's mounting holes. Alright, so next step is connecting everything together. Now would be a great time to connect your 24-pin ATX power supply cable into the motherboard. And you should also connect your 8-pin CPU power supply cable into the motherboard as well. Now, if you have an all-in-one CPU cooler, I recommend following the CPU cooler's manual on how to install it, and install it now. Next up is your power and reset switch, or your front panel input-output. You might want to refer to your motherboard's manual to see how they connect. Your cables will look like this, and you're going to want to insert them the correct way. Don't worry if you install it wrong, it just won't do anything. Then you're going to want to connect your front panel USB 3.0 connector into the motherboard's USB 3.0 port if it has one. Same with your USB Type-C port and connector. My motherboard doesn't have one, but I'll go ahead and place a picture here for your reference. If you have any USB 2.0 front panel connectors or devices, now would be a great time to install it. It will look like this, and you're going to want to connect it to your motherboard's USB 2.0 port like so. If you want to use your case's front panel audio jack, then you might want to connect your HD audio cable. 
it would look like this. And your port may be different, so refer to your motherboard's manual on how it looks. But you're going to want to go ahead and connect it like so. Oh yeah, and remember to be wire managing along the way as well. If you have a full size SATA hard drive, now would be a great time to install it. Go ahead and grab your case's hard drive caddy if it has one, and place the hard drive into it. Then your case should have came with these. These are storage drive screws. Using the screws, go ahead and screw down the driver onto the caddy. Then go ahead and install your hard disk drive back into the cage and connect the SATA cable you should have gotten with your motherboard and plug it in. You're going to also want to go ahead and plug your SATA power cable too, and for any devices that may use SATA power. You should also plug your SATA cable into the slots that haven't been disabled by your M.2 drive if you installed an M.2 drive. Finally, it's time to install your graphics card. Go ahead and take it out of the box and remove the PCIe protector. Then remove the input output slots according to how big your GPU is. An example, my GPU takes up two slots, so I'll remove slots two and three. Then go ahead and push the top PCIe clip down. You're going to want to install your GPU here as this is the slot that has the most bandwidth. Then go ahead and screw it down secure onto the case. And finally, go ahead and grab your PCIe power supply connector and connect it to your GPU according to how many it needs. An example, my Radeon 5700 XT takes one 8-pin and one 6-pin power connector. And just like that, you built your high-end gaming computer. This took you a lot of time and work. It may not look the best, but it is your first build, so you should definitely give yourself a pat on the back. Thank you guys so much for watching my tutorial. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like, dislike if you didn't, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, go ahead and put it in the comment section below, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you guys in the next video.